Ironspeed Designer MVP and today I'm going to talk to you about customizing styles within Ironspeed Designer. Now when you think about styles it's important to understand that this notion of style is actually a subtopic of themes within Ironspeed Designer. And if we're going to talk about themes it would probably be useful to see exactly which themes we are discussing and at any time within your application you can change themes and how you would do that is to go into the application wizard and go into the page style and here we have the ability to select the theme for our application and when we consider a theme and when we're talking about a theme especially for web applications what we're talking about are a set of colors a set of font styles spacing padding graphics and layout that determine the total overall theme of an application and if we were to break this theme up into core components, there is a special component called Cascading Style Sheets, which is a very large part of customizing a theme in Ironspeed Designer. Now, I'm going to do another video, Theme Customization, which kind of takes this topic and makes it a little bit broader. Right now, I want to spend some time focusing on specifically the style sheet customization of Ironspeed Designer. So in my application, I've chosen the Blue Ridge theme. And so we're just going to keep that. I'm going to hit Finish. And that brings us back into our application view. And right now, we are in the design view for our application. And when we're talking about styles, style sheets, this idea is that we take a cascading style sheet, which is a page file of code, and there are various classes with specific attributes that we can go in and create or modify to change the behavior of our IronSpeed application. And <coughs> when we're working with iron speed applications it's important to understand where you find these pieces and the different choices you have in terms of interacting with them and so let's go ahead right now and talk about how a cascading style sheet is applied to an iron speed application and then we'll look at the various ways of changing this so here we have our default application and what i want to do is i want to minimize this page in the Explorer view and I'm going to come down to the styles node and in the styles node you'll see we have some HTML stuff in here and we have a style.css this is the default style and then we have a left to right.css and a right to left.css and actually at this point I'm going to jump back into the application wizard and show you something In our application information section, we choose specifically which style sheet we're going to be using. You see this text direction here? Right now it's set to default left to right or right to left. What that's doing is that's telling IronSpeed which style sheet to use and, and some other stuff. But for the purpose of this demonstration, it's telling IronSpeed which style sheet we wish to use. So you'll see left to right, right to left corresponds with a style sheet over here. So let's finish out of this and let's go have a look at our cascading style sheet. Now when we look at this cascading style sheet this is the default style sheet. Now I according to the iron speed documentation which we're going to show you in a moment you don't want to modify this style sheet. This is the default style sheet. Iron Speed will make changes to this style sheet as your application may change. So what you need to do instead is pick the appropriate left to right or right to left style sheet to make your changes in. Now that we have established which style sheet we want to work in, let's go ahead and look at the behavior of this whole 
style sheet as it applies to our iron speed application. Now, when you think of a style sheet, what you should really be thinking of are objects and attributes, or classes and attributes. Um, and overall, what you're doing is you're saying, look, on all of my web pages that reference this style sheet, anytime I use a specific style attribute, which would be, or, or excuse me, a style class, I want to guarantee that these attributes are used anywhere that I use this class. And so um, IronSpeed has done a very thorough job of exposing these style sheets to us. Um, we have button links, button hovers. Further down here, we have the mouse, or excuse me, the menus. And so we have tons of ability to customize the style sheet right here within the application. Now, <coughs> Let's go ahead and just kind of leave this here right now. We can modify this style sheet within the Iron Speed Designer application, but let's go ahead and look at how we interact with the style sheet and our application. And to do that, I'm just going to open one of my application pages. How about we go into the default view? And here we are again. We are back in the designer and what I would like to show you is the HTML page. Now it's important to understand that the HTML page in IronSpeed is an incredibly powerful place to work. If you're comfortable working in this page, you can make changes with uh, JavaScript, ASP, I mean there's just there's a whole lot. Please review the documentation for how much can be done in this particular page. It's a powerful area to work. Um, Anything that you're used to doing in the ASPX class sheet in Visual Studio, just do it here, and then IronSpeed will actually carry that code over for you and compile it into the ASPX page for you. Um, so let's talk now about that cascading style sheet and where it gets referenced. And right here, you'll see we have a line dedicated to the style sheet that we want to use within this application. So, so we have a link ref style sheet, text, CSS, and it's an href, uh, UNC path, styles, style.css. Now, you understand that it's referencing the style.css, and what that means is at compile time, iron speed points there, but what it does is it takes our changes that we make in style.left to right, style.right to left and it puts them in that style.css for us. At least that's my understanding from the documentation. <clears throat> so, um, and then as we look down through here, um, you can spend some time looking through here and you can actually see, and I'm not gonna f go through this specifically, but you can see where these styles are being applied within the code. You can reference them. And so, um, this is where the style sheet magic happens. This is how it's used. And actually, here we have <coughs> specific instances of our style sheet class that I want to show you. You can see anytime we run across class equals, we're actually referencing a part of our style sheet. And so what we're saying is go to the dbody part of our style sheet and use all of the attributes within that dbody section. Down here again we have the FILBC, FILA, and let me just jump over to a new application that we're going to talk about. And here you can see that we actually have those attributes, or excuse me, those classes, and then over here are the attributes. And since we're here, um, well, let me clean up this discussion back over here. So now you understand um, how the style sheet gets applied. We have a reference to it up here, and this tells the application where to find the style sheet so that it can actually retrieve the individual attributes that we're telling it to use anytime we use this class statement. So that's how this all ties together. This is our individual class. This is where the sheet is referenced. And here is where we want to make our changes in this style sheet dot left to right. 
Now, uh, we were just looking at the FILB, so let's do a control F and let's find FILB. And there we are. And now, what you can do is you can come down here and you can see the actual attributes for that class being referenced. And we can change these values if we want, if we feel like we need to do that to customize a theme to meet a customer's specific brand. This is where we do it. Now, maybe you're like me and maybe cascading style sheets, you understand the whole concept, but if there was a way to make it easier, a way to make it a little more intuitive, a way to say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a visual, let's go that route. I like to use this Adobe Go Live. Um, I have a version that is older than the hills, um, but it, serts, it serves my purposes very, very well. And what it does, um, for example, here we're in the menu section. Adobe Go Live, and there's lots of applications like Go Live. You don't have to use Go Live. I like it. The latest version probably uh, makes this even easier. But within Adobe Go Live, I can go in here and I can say Class A Menu Hover. And I can think, okay, that's the hover state of my drop down menu. And in here, I can say, oh, hey, look, there's the color attribute and I can see a value and so okay well what if I want to change and here we see um, down here in this window down here we actually see examples of the style being applied so menu on L it has this let's go a little bit lower see there's a little gray shadow line right there so this is a visual way to see how these style sheets, or excuse me, how these individual classes of the, within the style get played out. And for me, this is really helpful. I like to be able to come in here and see the visual effect. And sometimes you don't see anything here because the attributes don't have, they have a spacing change or a padding change. And so there's no color or there's no actual visual display change like you can see here. But the whole idea is basically the same. I have my class over here on the left. If I want to go in and change it, I do that over here. So let's jump back up to where we were. I'm going to go back into my hover state. My hover has a color. and I'm going to go in and I'm going to double click that color and you can see right here it's gray. I don't like that. I want to change it to a different color. I want to make it blue. Now you can see immediately the effect that's going to have on the hover state within my menu it's going to change the text so let's go now and let's look at a generated application and we'll see how uh, I'm going to talk briefly about these class styles and where they're affected um, so from CSS we can change this background color of this products button up here we can change the hover state we can change the background hover of these menus. Oops, I clicked. We can, using CSS, we can change the border style of this rectangle. I mean, in CSS, basically, we can change all of these drop shadow effects. And I'll even talk a little bit more about this in my video where we talk about actually customizing an iron speed theme specifically right now we're talking about the classes so let's limit the scope to that and and this is just kind of showing you the various things you can change in that style sheet now maybe um, you know Adobe Go Live kinda works for you maybe just working within the designer itself works for you Sometimes for me, I don't necessarily need Go Live, but I do want to know exactly what it is that I'm working with in terms of colors. Now, I wrote a little application a long time ago uh, that I really enjoy using, and it's the I, I call it the CF Color Picker. And so let's go back into our generated application, and let's say that I can't find the particular attribute that is affecting this background color up in this header table and so what I want to do is I want to use this color dropper here and I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna drop right there and now I have the long int value 
I have the hex value and I have the RGB values for that cell. And so let's just say, you know, from for my purposes in this application, what I've done is I've created the ability to be able to save these now. So I'm just going to paste this up there and then I'm going to hit apply. And now I've got that color saved and what I can do is I can go through, oops. I can go through my style sheet now cuz I don't under I don't know what color that is. I can hit control C, I can go back into my color picker, I can paste it, I can hit apply. Now I can see what color that is. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to understand how these different themes are coming together and what they're doing. So Now that I have this visual understanding of what these colors are, I can understand better how to modify my style sheet to change how it looks and feels to the end user. And for the most part, that's the scope of this video. Um, and just what we're trying to do is talk about the style sheet, the proper style sheet you should be working in, how that style sheet gets updated into the default style sheet and then what I did was I talked about some third-party tools now this particular color picker there are hundreds and hundreds of these things for free on the internet if you happen to like what you're looking at here and you want it email me it's a really small executable I'd be happy to stick it out somewhere where you guys can download it um, but aside from that you know we're just talking about CSS. If CSS is a new idea for you, Google. There's plenty of information on cascading style sheets. Uh, Third-party tools make working with them a lot easier. And for the most part, it's a very powerful, very quick way to change the look and feel of your entire application. And for the scope of this video, it's done. The next video that I'm going to shoot actually talks about customizing an entire theme in Iron Speed Designer. And in that video, we're going to get more into the grassroot basics for how to change not just the style sheet, but a whole lot more.